One of the most interesting and pressing questions we have in myeloma right now is whether patients who have smoldering multiple myeloma should receive therapy or not. As of now, the standard has been that patients should be observed only. But as time has gone by, we really are um, analyzing, uh, you know, the statement and seeing if there's a subgroup of patients that would require therapy. Effectively, this was changed in 2014, where the International Myeloma Working Group changed the criteria. And the thought process was very logical. You know, if you're going to progress within the next two years, why wait um, until a patient develops a complication? So there were three new criteria added for what would be considered multiple myeloma need of therapy. So that was patients who had a uh, very elevated free light chain, two or more abnormalities on an MRI, which effectively we all take the PET scan as evidence for that, or extreme plasma cytosis. At uh, last year's ASH, not in 18, but in 17, Dr. Landgren uh, made a provocative statement, which really stuck with me, saying that probably smoldering is going to disappear. And I actually have to say that I agree with that. I think there's some smoldering patients that will have maybe 15% plasma cells, and for all practical purposes, they'll be more like MGOS. Whereas there's uh, smoldering patients who have either evolving disease or high-risk markers or markers of cell proliferation, that I think more and more will consider uh, patients who are requiring therapy. So uh, we have a large number of clinical trials that are exploring therapy for smoldering, uh, but as of now, the standard remains uh, observation. Now, when, when I was in training, people kind of used to, you know, think of smoldering, oh, it's smoldering. It can progress sometimes for many years, almost like a little pat in the back to a patient. Uh, we really should question that, you know, for the average smoldering patient, uh, based on some of the very elegant data that we have from Mayo Clinic in Rochester, they have a 65% risk of progression at 10 years. So if you're 55, that's a, there's a high likelihood you're going to be dealing with myeloma therapy. And if that is the case, we want to intervene before there's fractures or renal failure or anything like that. So smoldering multiple myeloma patients uh, right now do not receive uh, systemic therapy outside of a clinical protocol. It turns out in myeloma, since we have these effective agents, the immunomodulatory drugs, proteasome inhibitors, an HDAC inhibitor, and monoclonal antibodies, they're effective and don't have a lot of side effects that we have now changed the definitions of who has active myeloma. To be more clear, patients in the past were only treated when they developed complications of the disease, high blood calcium, kidney problems, anemia, or bone disease. But nowadays, even in the absence of those clinical sequelae, we treat patients who have more than 60% bone marrow plasma cells, a higher kappa lambda ratio, 100 fold or greater, or who have bone lesions on sensitive imaging. Those patients now are treated. So the patients who have smoldering multiple myeloma traditionally are not treated. However, in that group of what is now smoldering myeloma, if they have more than 20% plasma cells, if they have a kappa-lambda ratio of 20-fold abnormal or greater, and still don't have the calcium, kidney, anemia, and bone disease, they are at high risk to transform or to progress to myeloma. So those patients are treated on protocol. And for example, there is one particular protocol I'll mention to you, the from our institution, the elotuzumab monoclonal antibody combined with lenalidomide and dexamethasone given to 50 patients who have this risk of progressing to active disease. And when that was given, uh, we have high response rates, as you would expect, monoclonal proteins decreasing 84% uh, of the time. And we have very few, if any, progression to active myeloma at this time, although it's still very early. But the concept is here, we can now take active medicines, move them earlier, and we may be able to delay and maybe someday prevent uh, the development of active disease. So smoldering multiple myeloma is kind of a precursor disease state. Um, it's wherein you have 
all the diagnostic criteria for multiple myeloma, but yet you do not have any evidence of end organ damage. So no evidence of bone disease by uh, much more refined imaging in the way of MRIs, CAT scans, and PET scans, um, uh, not a significantly elevated free light chain ratio. And this is important to recognize because um, we have the newer diagnostic criteria for what is actually symptomatic multiple myeloma. So even as of today, which is 2019 now, um, smoldering myeloma should not be treated. The standard of care for smoldering multiple myeloma is watch and wait. Um, it's a space where we have a lot of different clinical trial options. And we have people who are doing a lot of research in this space. Given that it is a precursor disease state, and if you think about wanting to cure a plasma cell disorder, uh, it makes perfect sense to try and address smoldering multiple myeloma, so try and treat it when at its early stages. Part of the problem with this is we don't completely understand who are the ones who are going to progress to developing active myeloma, and that's why it's still an area of research. We have come up with certain sort of diagnostic features wherein we refer to these smoldering multiple myeloma patients as high-risk patients based on their genetics, based on um, uh, protein studies, and so on and so forth, wherein about 50% of these will progress within the next five years. And these are the ones that we're using clinical trials to treat with. We have a spectrum of clinical trials. We have fairly early stage clinical trials, like what I am doing at Mass General. I am using a vaccination approach with the idea of using an immunological approach to try and train the T cells to recognize myeloma as foreign so that myeloma does not become active again. And then you have the other end of the spectrum wherein we are treating smoldering myeloma like full-blown myeloma, and that's the CESAR study, which is being done by uh, Marimi uh, Mateos over in Spain, and that includes KRD, a transplant followed by KRD with the idea of getting rid of the disease completely. And then in between these two strategies, you have all kinds of clinical trials in between wherein patients can try depending on what is available to them. But it is an area of very active research but as of today, it is an area which, unless you're on a clinical trial, you should not be getting treated for smoldering multiple myeloma.